welcome to the movie's past and present podcast. It's March 23rd, 2023, and this is episode 101. I'm your host, Stanford Clark, and I'm podcasting from the crossroads of the West in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. Just on my blog, moviespastandpresent.com, I'll be providing recommendations, commentary, and reviews about current and classic cinema. Thanks for tuning in, and let's do this thing. New in theaters this week, first up is The Lost King. This is a comedy drama from IFC Films. It's directed by Stephen Frears. And in this inspiring true story, uh, modern-day amateur historian Philippa Langley, who's played by Sally Hawkins, believes she has made the archaeological find of the century, the lost burial site of King Richard III. She takes on Britain's most eminent historians, forcing them to rethink the legacy of one of the most controversial rulers in English history. Uh, this film also stars Steve Coogan, Harry Lloyd, and Mark Addy. Uh, based on the trailer, I think it looks to be uh, uh, quite a compelling story. Uh, this this uh, amateur historian uh, is almost looks like she's getting haunted by, by the ghost of King Richard III that helps drive her and move her on to uh, to make this uh, discovery. The Last King is rated PG-13 by the Motion Picture Association for some strong language and brief, suggest- su- brief suggestive references. Uh, next up is A Good Person. This is a drama from MGM. This is written and directed by Zach Braff. And it stars Florence Pugh, as a woman named Allison, whose life falls apart following her involvement in a fatal accident. Uh, It also stars Morgan Freeman and Molly Shannon. This movie looks heavy, but, you know, great actors. And and, uh, part of the press materials say sometimes we find hope where we least expect it. So, so... uh, Maybe there's some hope in this very bleak story. Uh, A Good Person is rated R by the Motion Picture Association for drug abuse, language throughout, and some sexual references. I'm stoked that on the podcast today, I've got a conversation with my good friend and coworker, Chris Dallin. Chris is a very accomplished marketing and communications professional. Uh, He is a coworker of mine and just a a dear friend. And I really couldn't do anything uh, Disney related without uh, talking with my buddy, Chris. Uh, We've got a conversation about, you know, Disney 100 the uh, the 100th anniversary celebration of the Walt Disney Company, which was founded in 1923, and Chris has a really unique take on 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 uh, how he how he groups and thinks about his favorite Disney films. So anyway, excited and and grateful that Chris could would take the time to talk with me. And here is my conversation with Chris Dallin. I have the honor and distinct privilege of talking with my buddy, Chris Dallin, today. Hi, Chris. Hi, Stan. It's so great to be with you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Chris uh, is is a dear friend and and also a coworker. We uh, we work for the same we work for the same company. Chris is a marketing and communications uh, professional and, and and senior leader and uh, and just. So glad that that we're that we're friends, Chris. I'm wondering, Chris, if you would mind uh, telling our listeners how we uh, how we first uh, met. Well, Stan, several years ago, um, I went uh, to the offices and I had heard that there was this Disney fan on the floor. And I said to myself, <laughs> "Well, I must meet said Disney fan." So. Um, I walked around the corner and I walked in your office. You were sitting at your desk and you were. Uh, your office was decorated beautifully with um, the attraction posters from Disneyland. 
And I looked at them, I looked you in the eye, I believe, and I said, what is this on the wall? (laughs) And you sheepishly said, well, I'm a Disney fan. And um, one thing led to another, and I said, well, it happens that I am too. And uh, boy, from that day on, we've talked all kinds of Disney, had adventures with each other and so on. But yeah. what a great opportunity that was to meet you, Stan. Well, I appreciate it so much that you, you, know, that you took the effort to find me. That was such that was such a kick because most of my coworkers are just like, oh, you know, oh, he's a Disney fan or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and then he came in and uh, knew knew you know what, what was on my wall and and uh, were really nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely because i get it right i get the right disney is that's for well, sure and yeah as you mentioned we've had some really great disney adventures and hopefully many more in the future chris so glad uh so glad and so happy about all it's such happy memories you know indeed so i i'm so glad that chris that you that you've taken some time today out of your busy schedule to to be on, on the podcast uh i Talk, you know, I, I really don't really want to do anything uh, Disney without consulting with with Chris, uh, and uh, so I talked to Chris about these uh, you know, movie this movie project that I that I'm doing this year, watching a hundred uh, my favorite Disney movies, and I was just curious about what Chris's favorite Disney movies are, and and uh, anyway, so continue the, we continue the conversation, and, and and Chris is just gracious enough to come on the podcast today. And, and and have a conversation about what are his favorite Disney movies. Now, Chris, you've put this in a really I, I just I really love how you have organized uh, this conversation, and I'll, I'll, I will turn it over to you to tell us how uh, how you've decided to uh, classify your favorite Disney movies. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's almost like the biological labeling system, right? Of of movies that I like from Disney. And I, I would suggest that um, the parameters that you gave me, Stan, was that it must be a full length feature and it must be um, produced or, um, or otherwise uh, done by Disney at the time. So it must have been made by Disney. So, for example, Star Wars A New Hope even though part of Disney now would not count because yeah. it was not made by Disney, for example. Yeah. So um, I took a look at that. So I have a preamble to the list, um, and then I have four items, um, an homage to Walt Disney or a connection to Disneyland is one of those categories. Number two is overcoming challenges or a lesson to learn, because I believe that movies um, really uh, impact our culture and in ways that uh, are hard to see sometimes. Other times it's very obvious. Um, but it also can have such impacts on us. So for me, movies can be very personal and they carry like music, these great memories of a time and a place and a person and so on. So that's part of that as well. Um, number three is, uh, friendship and adventure. And then number four is movies about dogs. I, when you asked me to put together my list, I didn't know that I had these particular, categories but i i listed all of my favorites and um started to see some of these things emerge and that's and it's been fun to go through these dan well i this is such i think a, a wonderful list chris and i'm really excited just to dive dive in and, and see how you've you've uh you know classified these movies that you love so uh which which would you like to start with you know what category should we well, start with? Yeah, let's uh, let's start with the preamble because I, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. Well, it's so hard to pay homage to some of these movies because the foundation that was laid by Walt Disney, um, Roy O. Disney and Ub Iwerks cannot be understated. Um, just the great work that they did um, is really great. Even those these particular items don't qualify in the parameters, I think it's worthy of a mention um, yeah. before we jump in. So in my mind, the real 100th anniversary was 
June 28th, 1921, when Walt Disney started the Laugh-O-Gram Studios in Kansas City. Yeah, which you and I have been to together. Yes, we have. And it's just <laughs> yeah. um, so many people forget about the Alice comedies and, and some of the things that happened because that really started Walt um, on the path. And then, and then he failed. And I think it's important to recognize that. You know, one of the quotes that Walt mentioned was, um, you may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. Um, he failed. And so that gave him some background information that served him well the rest of his career. And um, really interesting. And, and then he lost a couple of characters and he did some other things along the way that we'll talk about here, Stan. But um I really think it's important to mention Laughagram Studios. He created the Alice Comedies. Now, yeah. the, the Alice Comedies, as you know, was um, a young girl that happened upon the world um, of cartoons. And so she was emerged in cartoons, which pays off on one of my favorite movies later on. So yeah. um, the Alice Comedies were great. Um, as you know, Laughagram Studios failed, and he moved then to Hollywood. He lived in his uncle Robert's house, and created Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And um, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was looking really great, but then this this guy named Charlie Mintz, um, basically, uh, depending on who you are and what your perspective is, but um, took Oswald the Lucky Rabbit from Walt Disney, and um, that kind of set up how Disney has done um business you know from then on what what's interesting the rest of the story there is oswald the lucky rabbit is now back in the disney family yeah. and um because they made a trade with al michaels al michaels the sportscaster <laughs> yeah, um, yeah one of the best sports trades ever trading um <laughs> al michaels for oswald the lucky rabbit holy smokes story if you get a chance to read about that it's such an interesting story yeah yeah. So so then um, we can't go on um, again without the, the early Mickey Mouse shorts. Um, Playing Crazy, as you know, is, was the first movie to be made. However, the world met Mickey Mouse in the movie Steamboat Willie. Yeah. And um, what, what's interesting there is someone tried to, to take Mickey Mouse. And we'll talk about that in a minute with another one of the movies that I really like as well. Um, and then there was, a, of course, the Silly Symphonies. And some of the other things that, that really allowed some of these movies to happen. And so it's hard to talk about my favorite movies without that preamble, because that's such an important foundational element for the Disney company. Yeah, Chris, thank you for, for, for bringing that up. And I, and I appreciate, I really appreciate that because I, I was a hard decision actually for me to like say, okay, I'm excluding shorts. Uh, because there's they they are so important and so foundational as you mentioned and also in a way experimental i think you know disney used these shorts in a way to try stuff out uh and 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 they were you know i mean steamboat willie was the first sound cartoon right i mean the cartoon was synchronized sound and um color you know et cetera et cetera, et cetera. so those were those are really cool things and important to the foundation of the disney company thank you Thank you for that. Excellent preamble. Well, yeah, yeah. And and I, I really appreciate it. The other thing that I wanted to mention, too, and this plays out in a lot of the other movies, too, is Walt Disney, certainly his name is on the company, but we can't underestimate the value and the impact that two other gentlemen had on the Disney company. And that's his brother, Roy O. Disney. Yeah. Um, between Roy and Walt, they're probably the best examples of complementary opposites in history. Frankly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Ub Iwerks, who was really an amazing artist that made Mickey Mouse come to life. And so I, I think it's important to honor those two gentlemen as we celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the Disney company. Yeah, good call. Yep, true. Uh, great. Well, so 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 we have these four chapters, Stan, or yes. these four um, biological phylums, as you were, uh, as it were, on. Um, these Disney movies and happy to talk about those Stan when you're ready. Let's do it. So, and, and, and whatever order Chris, you want to go in. Okay. Go for it. 
uh, on that sound great. Now, um, these are not listed in any particular order of importance or how I might enjoy them. And, and as I thought about your assignment, you know, what? how do you classify movies? And um, is it the number of Academy Awards that a movie wins? And, and oh, by the way, um, Walt Disney by far has the most Oscars, these yeah. Academy Awards. And it's important to note that because yeah. of his foundational development of not only the cartoon medium, but also telling stories in such unique ways. It's Doesn't he have 32, Chris? Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds right to me. Yeah, I think it's 32. He got that special Oscar for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Right. And, and, I, but, and I think that just counts as one, although the statue itself has you know one big oscar and then seven <laughs> smaller ones if uh i can put a picture of it in the podcast notes on my blog because it's it's pretty cool i think it's on display right now uh i believe it, it's home is in the walt disney family museum in san francisco right. yeah. that's where i think i actually saw that's it. where i've seen it yeah and i i thought i read that it's on display right now in disney california adventure or in the in the like the entrance to the carthay circle restaurant right uh because the Oscar season, you know, and, and ABC doing the Oscars and Disney owning ABC, that kind of thing. Syner- corporate synergy, but still, go check it out if you're go- if you're at Disneyland. You know, you should definitely check that because that that's that's such a cool thing, cool piece of Disney history. Yeah, really is, and I I really um, I think about that all the time. Um, I've seen the the Academy Award. Um, when Walt Disney received it. And, it, and if you recall, Shirley Temple, Shirley presented. Temple. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and she said to Walt, you know, are you, are you proud, Mr. Disney? And his response was something like, boy, I'm so proud I could bust. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and when you understand the, the history of Snow White and the seven dwarfs, um, you, you understand the passion and the financing and the, and the risk and yeah. um, ignoring the naysayers, um, how beautiful of a film that is. And that's really number one on my list, Dan, is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, um, just because it's such an accomplishment from many levels. And you think about it, that film was made in 1937, and it is still relevant today. I could put it on for the grandkids or anyone in the neighborhood and it would capture the the attention and bring magic into the home. Yeah. And again, built in 1937, made in 1937. What a what a wonderful film. There's no doubt. This is exactly uh, that's the, what a great choice, Chris. And and there, it's such a remarkable achievement. And I'm with you. I think that film holds up so well. People complain about Snow White's voice, and I think, uh, who cares? It's she, she's great. It's it's you know, I think it's just a brilliant. Perfect film. I, it is 1937, hand drawn the hard way, um, yeah. and and just done so perfectly in so many ways. And just just the fact that Walt had the vision to make this film the way that he did changed movie history in many ways, and and hence made him eligible for all of those Academy Awards and the yeah. one that we're talking about with the Shirley Temple presentation. Well, and Chris, if I'm not mistaken, didn't. Disney, I mean, because Snow White was a huge financial success worldwide, just a worldwide smash. Didn't they? Didn't Walt and Roy use that money from Snow White to buy the land in Burbank, California, and, and, right. and to build and to build their their studio? Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly right. Um, and then moved over, and it was funny because Walt and his his father Elias. Um, we're having a conversation at one time. And if you know the Disney family history, um, Elias was a construction worker and a farmer and, and many other things owned a jelly company. Um, and so after they built the studios, um, Elias said, well, well, what's going to happen when um, this doesn't work out for you? And so they built it kind of in the form of a healthcare facility. So if they needed a transfer that they could sell it to a, um, a health company. Well, we all know the rest of the story that it's still going really strong, and that's great. Yeah, it's it's great to see, isn't it? And and you and I have also been on the studio a lot uh, together. And and uh, you know, there's a they've got the the buildings that were built, you know, in the, in the 40s from with the proceeds of Snow White. But 
Michael Eisner built a new headquarters building. I can't remember what, what year that building opened. It was late eighties, early nineties. And you might have you might have seen pictures of it, but it's got the seven dwarfs that are uh holding up the roof. Right. And which is a fun whims- whimsical touch, but it also is is a, I think a very literal, <laughs> you know, uh, piece of architecture. In that, if it weren't for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, you know, none of this, uh, none of this would be here. Right, exactly. And and they ran out of money. And and one of Walt's uh, uh, things was he he needed this to happen. Um, they ran out of money. He loved his car. It was a brand called the Moon. Um, moon brand car and so you'll you'll read in many of the biographies of walt disney that um roy called him and said hey we're out of money and walt then said well sell the moon then and if you don't know about that car you wondered what walt actually <laughs> what he <do you> meant <laughs> but, but but yeah so he sold his dream car in order to finish the financing on snow white and the seven dwarves and that's something wow really amazing so Great so yeah, choice. My first film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and that's probably is in order. Um, uh, I think just the accomplishment, the hand drawn, the passion, the story, um, putting everything on the line, ignoring the naysayers, really started the Disney company to what we know it today. Um, again, adding all the preamble items that we had mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, so again, I'll I'll continue on the list of. Uh, these items on a homage to Walt Disney or yes. Disneyland. So, so number two on the list, again, not in any particular order, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh yeah. Um, uh, starring Kirk Douglas, James Mason, um, made in 1954 by Walt Disney pictures. Um, really, uh, one of his first live action endeavors, um, had these great, uh, uh, artists at the time. Um, uh, many of you all know that they they shot the um, one of the scenes with the Kraken um, in the in the daylight, and you can see robes and some of the other special effects. So Walt took it all back and added some water and shot it at night, and we get this wonderful um, movie magic that happens um, as a result of that. And um, as you know, um, in that particular movie. Um, uh, Captain Nemo had a organ, um, and that organ now exists at the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. And yeah. it's kind of fun to make that connection too. Isn't that fun? Disney yeah. history. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, I love Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea too, Chris. The uh, I I just recently watched it because it's it's on my Disney 100 list. Uh, it I just think it holds up incredibly well. All practical effects. Um. Uh, and and uh, it's and you know they did some location shooting, but as you said, a lot a lot of stuff was shot on the Disney Studio lot. If I'm not mistaken, and I can't remember which soundstage, we didn't we got to go look at it, because uh, they dug how deep did they dig you know out so they could put in water you know have a a water tank right in, inside the soundstage. Yeah. I, I can't remember, but we but but uh, still very sure. cool. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, and one of the, one of the lines that I really like, uh, it's from Captain Nemo in this film. He said, he said this, Stan, think of it on the surface. There is hunger and fear. Men still exercise unjust laws. They fight and tear one another to pieces. A mere few, few feet beneath the waves, their rain ceases. Their evil drowns here on the ocean floor is the only independence here. I am free. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of capture what Jules Verne was trying to establish in his book. And I think it's a wonderful um, adaptation of the book when they made this film. Oh, I'm with you. And just w- one of the best, I think, I think it's yeah, one of the, one of the finest films from the studio. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. Well, we're well, continuing with uh, Domish Walt Disney and, or a connection to Disneyland. Um, number three, saving Mr. Banks. Um, nice. Um, in 2013, um, you know, it's, it's a story about um, Walt Disney um, getting the rights to, to make um, one of the finest films again um, along the way and um, from, from PL Travers and, 
really an interesting story about what happened there. Um, and one of the lines that struck me, and this goes back to the preamble that we had talked about too. And, you know, as he gained the rights to tell the story of, uh, of Poppins, uh, just really interesting. So he, he said this, and this is a line from the movie. Um, I fought this battle from her side before, because as you know, Travers just didn't want to give this up. She loved this book and she wanted to maintain control. So he said, um, kind of uh, siding with her and understanding where she's coming from, because Walt had been in her spot before when he lost Oswald to Lucky Rabbit. Yeah. He said, I fought this battle from her side. Pat Powers, he wanted the mouse and I didn't have a bean back then. He was the big, terrifying New York producer, and I was just a kid from Missouri with a sketch of Mickey. But it would have killed me to give him up. Honest to God, killed me. That mouse, he's family. And uh, just really captures what it must have been like for the passion that Walt brought to Mickey Mouse and brought to telling these wonderful stories. And as you know, Mary Poppins went on to win several Academy Awards, and one of uh Walt's finest achievements. Yeah, life. yeah, absolutely. You know, isn't I, I'm so glad you picked the same. It is such a, I think it's such a fine film, and and really tells this story. I think in such a good way because it's a fascinating. It's a fascinating part of Disney history, and also just an interesting story about this. You know, kind of this battle of the titans, <laughs> you know, but how they, uh, how you know how Mary Poppins got made. Really great choice, Chris. Oh, well, well, thanks, Dan. And for those of you that choose to watch the film um, in Marvel fashion, you want to watch it clear to the end um, of the credits because they have there um, some of the original recordings of the interviews with P.L. Travers. Yeah. And, and it's wonderful to listen to that, how insistent she was. But you have to appreciate the passion. And Walt clearly got that. Oh, absolutely. And uh I'm excited because that's on my list too. I mean, the, all these ones you mentioned are on, are on my list. I'm excited to rewatch that one because I, I love too. Again, they filmed it on the studio lot, and and uh, just because that you know, it's just like one of those things you just want. I you know, if I had a time machine, that's a, definitely like a creative period I'd want to see happening. Yeah, uh, like the, you know the kind of the negotiations and then the making of Mary Poppins. Although Walt was negotiating for Mary Poppins for decades wasn't he chris well, I mean, a long time for sure yeah yeah but again i think that he got that I, and it it just was fascinating to watch and and one of the things i love about the film too of course is they visit disneyland but they yes they, they, they make disneyland up to be um as it was um back in 1954 so uh or pardon me 1955 um era and and just really interesting to to see the the castle in more of a gray tone, yes. Um, see the coming attraction posters out on the fence, yeah. Out of the, up, yes, right. Yep, yep. Um, and, and just wonderful to see that. So it, it was um, it was fun to see that that um, Disney fans um, notice things like that. When Tom Hanks, of course, points, he uses the the two finger point and stuff like that, and. Um, fans like you and I stand notice things like that. And that's what makes the film so amazing is just the details that others may not notice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. All right. Continuing on the list. Um, and we could talk hours about each one of these. Films. I know. I know. <laughs> sure. These films um, are also great, Chris. Uh, the next one on the list is Swiss family Robinson. Oh, Night Yes. 1960 film, a wonderful film. And um, I love the film in its own right. Um, just this idea of living on with your family on um, an island in a tree house. Um, when I watched it for the first time, I was just taken and, and, and have still. But the connection to Disneyland here, of course, is the um, Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, which we both know it's recently been announced that um, they're doing away with the Tarzan Treehouse at Disneyland and bringing back Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. And I couldn't be more excited about I'm it. I'm so happy about that, too. That was, this is going to be so cool. 
Yeah, it, yeah, it's really great. Of course, it's always been at Disney World, but it it's nice to see it come back to its original spot. To be sure, I just rewatched this movie too, Chris, because you know I'm just, I'm in, I'm in this 1960s period of uh, of time uh, with my Disney 100 while watching and. I was so taken with this film too. I just remember how much I loved it as a kid. Like who doesn't want to live in that tree house? You know, that tree house is like the most amazing thing in that. And, and such is such a great adventure. So, so well, so well produced. I read Chris that, that uh, the tree, they, the, they found a giant tree that literally they could use, you know, for the, as for the set. So it's an actual, it's an actual tree, and then they were kind of always in a state of, of, of flux, just depending on what the filming needs were for the day, you know, uh, how they, how they, uh, how they did it. But it's what a marvel, such a cool movie. Well, um, take my money if they have that tree on VRBO somewhere. I know. I'm looking up right after this, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like holy smokes! Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. What a great adventure as well. Um, okay, n- number five on my on my list for an homage to Walt Disney or a connection to Disneyland is the Re- Reluctant Dragon. Oh yeah, um, made in 1941. It's about um, a gentleman whose wife encourages him to take an idea to Walt Disney to the Disney Studios, and that's the beauty of this is it's not necessarily um, a a film with a plot other than this adventure. But what you find is that he experiences uh, the Disney lot. We get to see um, the Disney lot in the heyday of Walt Disney leadership and some of the original voices and cinematographers and sound men um, at the Disney studio, just a wonderful walk down Disney history. And um, then at the end, of course, uh, this guy that has this idea for a cartoon happens upon Walt Disney um, watching a film and they're about ready to screen um, the very film that the gentleman was going to propose. <laughs> yes. the dragon and said, Hey, yes. we're, we're already in front of you. And it's just a, a wonderful film. But, but, you know, Stan, as I was preparing for our conversation today, I found a piece of trivia that I think your listeners are going to love. Um, and that is, um, the reluctant dragon, as you know, was not a mean dragon, but rather enjoyed poetry and uh, kind of a, a little bit of a fun um, side note um, for the Disney fans. There are attractions at Disney World that feature the dragon figment. And um, there was an educational short uh, film called What Can You See by Looking? And the reluctant dragon is actually depicted as the uncle of Figment. And um, so that was a new piece of trivia that I found as I was preparing for our conversations then. Interesting. Uh, what year do you know was that? What can you see by looking? I, I can't. I, uh, I didn't jot down made. the exact uh, year, but uh, no worries. that's the name of, the, of the, the educational short. What can you see by looking? Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, so check that out and um kind of a fun connection to disney world in this case and, absolutely and also the film itself again a wonderful opportunity to check out the disney studios isn't that just a delight that is such a fun such a fun movie i i love and i think you know disney fans who who, who know and love this movie uh love the photo op that's on the Disney studio a lot of the, of uh, Mickey Avenue and Dopey drive. Right. Right. And the, and the in between and all of that area. It's wonderful. And yeah. we've been there together, Stan. Yeah. Which, as I say, right. we've been there and had, you know, taking, t- taking photos there. That's, that's so cool that they, you know, I, I believe that that prop was made for the movie for made for the Roger dragon. And it's, they've just kept it there. And, and, it's, and, and it's wonderful. So it's, yeah, yeah. So cool. A wonderful romp. Um, as you celebrate 100 years of Disney, it's certainly an icon. With yeah, that yeah, for day. sure, for sure. Okay, number six um, on items that are connected to Walt Disney or Disneyland. Um, simple film called "The Best of Walt Disney's True Life Adventures," um, 1975 film, and it takes um, those true life adventures and 
and and tells them. And really, um, those films were the birth of what we know now as nature films or national yeah. graphic films. And and really, Walt was again a, a pioneer in that. And and many know if you're a Disneyland fan the original name of Adventureland was True Life Adventureland, an homage of those films. And uh, just just really fun to walk through uh, memory lane there. And there were several Academy Awards that Walt was able to gain by these uh, True Life Adventure films. You know, Chris, I'm, I probably have seen that, but I, I don't know. what How cool. So it's just really like a kind of a summary or an overview yeah. of, 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 of multiple – True Life Adventure films. Yep, yep. Again, made in 1975. Seven, and yeah. Get a taste of all of those films. Yeah. I wonder if it's something that I saw in the theater as a kid, or was it on the Wonderful World of Disney? Do you know what? If you uh, know, but may, maybe even both. Or both. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, so that wraps up my uh, my connection to Walt Disney and Disneyland, and I'm going to kick this up a little bit for time's sake, but. The next one um, that that I would mention is Friendship and Adventure, Stan. Okay. Um, my the first on my list there is Never Cry Wolf, uh, nineteen eighty five film. Uh, yeah. Pictures. Um, wonderful. What a film. cool movie. Yeah, yeah, about a gentleman that goes up to study wolves. Um, he can only take so many things on the plane just because of weight. Uh, they throw out all of his luggage. They throw out. <laughs> yeah. um, some of his warm clothes and so on, only to find out that they had put um, this beer in the in the canoe that's on the bottom of the plane. Um, he gets up there and, of course, studies these these wolves on his own. And um, I think it really talks well to adventure and and friendship and other things. But one of the quotes from the movie is, uh, and this is from Rosie, boredom, Tyler, boredom. That's what's wrong. How do you beat boredom, Tyler? You beat it with adventure. You beat it with adventure. And um, I love this movie, um, as I'd mentioned in the preamble, um, a time and a place, a person, a thing, a feeling. My dad and I watched this film together and we both loved it. And so that's oh, why yeah. it's on the list, Dan. So cool. What is What a wonderful memory and a sentimental thing. And it's, it's a really striking movie as i recall beautiful cinematography and just a great adventure story right it Which is. is just kind of cl- again classic disney yeah exactly uh, yeah yeah oh great choice what a wonderful film so number two on friendship and adventure is who framed roger rabbit <laughs> nice uh, um <laughs> and in preparation for our conversation today i rewatched the film and i had forgotten how much i loved this movie yeah yeah um uh done by uh, and really, it's a collaboration of a lot of people, Warner Brothers, David Spielberg, Disney. They bring all these things together. And, um, and oh, by the way, the reluctant dragon appears. Yeah, the reluctant dragon has, shows up. He's living in Toontown. Right? Hey, exactly. And it's just wonderful that all these things are connected, you know, when you look at the, at the details. Um, yes. There, there's a couple scenes that just have to be mentioned. Um uh, what one of the opening scenes, of course, is um, is a cartoon with Roger Rabbit and the baby um, that's in the film, and then soon thereafter, there is dueling pianos between Donald Duck and Daffy Duck, and it's just <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so fun. And then, and the, and then the main character, of course, falls off a building in in Toontown, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, it ends up that Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny, the icons of the two studios, are following with him and have a uh, a pithy, you know, kind of conversation. And <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it just is hilarious. But it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah, my my favorite dialogue in that mo- in that uh, movie though is between Eddie, the main character, and Jessica Rabbit, uh, uh, Roger's wife, and. Um, Jessica says, you don't know how hard it is being a woman looking the way that I do. Um, and Eddie says, you don't know how hard it is being a man looking at a woman looking the way you do. And Jessica <laughs> Rabbit says, hey, I'm not bad. I'm just drawn bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, One of the great and, lines. Yeah. Uh, just great lines. And in <laughs> all practical sets, hand drawn. Um, yeah. Ju- just, just a beautiful uh, 
uh, movie in and of itself. But when you know this, the history of the Disney company and the history of Warner Brothers and Steven Spielberg and others, it's just a magical movie and a great way to celebrate 100 years of Disney. Oh, Chris, I love that you put this on your list because that movie is such it's such a marvel. It's 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 so entertaining. But you just yeah, as you're talking about all practical effects, you know, and uh, uh, it was I think just a real marvel of movie making too. And and because uh, it was just at the beginning of the digital era, you, you know, uh, 1989 I believe was when this or was it 1988? I think when this came out. But anyway, 1988, you've got yeah, it. right, yeah. Uh, still, it's 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 remarkable. Highly recommended. I'm so yeah, so glad we talked about love, love, love this movie. Yeah, it, it really is great. And if you look close, there are homages to the silly symphonies and <laughs> yes, um, and it, and many other things. And it's just it's just fun when you look at the details. It's fun watching the movie with a different lens of yeah. seeing what kind of connections there are to Disney Company and Warner Brothers as well. Yes. That's way fun. So choice. number three, Wild Hogs. Um, I, nice. I love Wild Hogs. This one was released in 2007 and, you know, stars three or four great, great of the comedy legends within, um, within film. Um, but I'll leave you with this, this quote. Um, Did you ever wake up one morning and wonder what happened to your life? I thought I'd have an adventure. And uh, the four stars in the movie, of course, go out and have an adventure. And it's funny. And I like it. You know, my my buddies and I will do road trips once in a while. And so this movie speak to me. I was going to say, Chris, you you go on these motorcycle trips. You know, you know, you know <laughs> firsthand what it's like. So uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a fun choice. Uh, great, great movie. Um, number four, Jungle Book. Uh, 1967. Um, really, uh, a lot of reasons why I have this on my list, but one of the last movies that Walt supervised himself. Um, and I'll I'll leave you with the quote: uh, "The strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. It's the law of the jungle." And um, really great way to celebrate Walt and the Disney Company because um, it was one of his last projects. Isn't that the greatest movie? Uh... It's one of the first memories that I have. I'm not sure when I saw it. It was probably some sort of a re-release. But I remember, well, and actually, I'm reminded by my siblings. Uh, the Jungle Book soundtrack was, I guess, was one of my favorite things to listen to when I was young. And and I think it drove my family crazy <laughs> listening to the Jungle Book. But I still, I, I love it so much. It's such a sentimental favorite. And I think it's such a fine film, too. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Um, the next one, Toy Story, of course, first full length computer feature. Yes. 1995. Um, nice. You know, with with uh, Buzz and Woody, you've got a friend in me. How can I, could I not put that on the list of friendship? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the next one, The Little Mermaid, 1989. Um I saw this movie with my little sister and I'm 13 years older than my little sister. And so I, I took her to the movies all the time and we used to sing Alan Menken songs, you know, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Yeah. It's my collection is complete. And we, and, and I still sing that song because it's a wonderful memory in my family. And, um, and uh, one of, one of the great memories, Stan, um, we went to the D23 convention Um and I know that surprises everyone that might be listening. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, they had a concert uh, that was amazing. They had Alan Menken and then Richard Sherman from the Sherman Brothers. And they played classic uh, Disney songs, and it was wonderful. And um, I remember Alan Menken singing his songs there. And I, uh, you know, for some reason, this film sticks with me for a lot of reasons that are very personal to me. And that's why I love this film. You know, I'm so glad you put that on your list too. It's it's such a fantastic film, and those songs, as you mentioned, how, how what a great memory with you and your sister too. I love that. Well, well, thank you, Stan. Um, next, of course, how can you talk with uh, about Disney friendship without talking about cars? Uh, yes, that's right. 
just a great movie, um, 2006, and um, you've all seen it. And it's just uh, an amazing message of remembering where you're from, remembering what's important. Um, one of my favorite quotes from the movie, Stan, is they're driving right by and they don't even know what they're missing. Um, yeah. You know, take some time to figure out what's in your no- what's in your own neighborhood. Um, you know, thinking about the people that have gone before and uh, the people that might be in the neighborhood with stories to tell, taking that time is great. And I think the film has a wonderful message. You know, it doesn't, Chris. This is a message that you live I I think because you know just having known you for so long and just you take time to to uh, live your life and you go to the places and you do these things that just the, you know, the, the these lessons that Lightning McQueen learns you already knew or you already know and anyway I think you're a great a great example to me in that in that regard. Well, Stan, thank you for that. And I again. Um, as, as we started our conversation, movies have stories to tell and lessons to teach. And yeah, I think there are some wonderful lessons in some of these movies and cars is certainly one of them. Yeah, for sure. That's good. Um, the next one with friendship and adventure, I would add invincible. This is, um, Oh yeah. A 2006 story about Vince Papali with the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. Um, yeah. yeah, that's right. And, um, this guy, it's it's a true story, and I I love this group of movies from Disney um, that talks about usually in in the form of sports, but talks about friendship and adventure um, as well as overcoming, and uh, really a great film. Um, but there's there's one scene in this film that that captures the whole film for me. Um, Vince Papali, um, of course, played by Mark Wahlberg, is sitting at a bar stool and he's wondering um, if he ought to try out for the Philadelphia Eagles. And and he did. And and he's down there and he should. And he said, geez, should I keep doing this? And and the bartender encapsulated the whole movie for me. Um, It's what a true friend would say. Um, He said, even if you're down there for an hour, hey, you're down there. and That was profound to me because um, a true friend puts things into perspective, encourages you along the way, helps you to accomplish some dreams. And and the rest of the story is, is there was this, there was this kid that was on the block. He tried out for the NFL and he made it. And it's because of the encouragement of a friend um, where, why he went down. And, and Stan, I feel that way about you as well. You're a wonderful friend and, and it's a great, it's a great movie that encapsulates a lot of really meaningful things to me. So that's why I put Invincible on my list. Oh, thanks for those kind words, Chris. I appreciate it. And that is such a good movie. You know, Mark Wahlberg is great. Isn't it? I think it's Elizabeth Banks who's playing. Yeah, right. she the, she's yeah. the, the bartender, isn't she? And kind of the, anyway, terrific. Such a good movie and so inspirational. And yeah. don't, don't you, I think Disney, Disney, when they're on their game, they make a really good sports movie. <laughs> you know <laughs> they do yeah i've got a yeah. pure amar coming up on my list nice so, okay uh, um so let's let's move over to movies about dogs and i'll finish up with overcoming challenges okay movies about dogs number one on the list old yeller i was gonna say it's gotta be old yeller <laughs> yeah <laughs> most charming and disturbing movie from my childhood <laughs> right, right exactly but it was real stuff and it was that is real yeah made in 1957 and you fell in love with the dog and your heart just broke for the family um at the end um but i have a quote from this movie too stan um and it and it's a good lesson for life he says I don't guess it's a thing you ought to forget. What I mean is things like that happen. They may seem mighty cruel and unfair, and that's how life is part of the time. But that isn't the way life, that's, that isn't the only way life is. A part of the time, it's mighty good. And a man can't afford to waste all the good part worrying about the bad parts. That makes it all bad. And it's a wonderful quote from that movie and lessons to be learned in childhood and adulthood too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, 
it, it's such a it's such an excellent movie and it, it, great great quote chris thank you for yeah. sharing that i it's always so emotional to watch that movie but i need to i need to bust that out again because it just is such a it's such a good film such a great movie about yeah. about love and um you know, a dog can teach you many things. And one yeah. of them certainly is, um, you know, unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And if you can have unconditional love in your life, you've got a lot. So true. Yeah. The next one, um, a, uh, a film that was just uh, released a couple years ago, Togo. Togo. Oh, yeah. Um, Togo that, that, uh, on Disney+. Plus. Yep, that's right. It's on Disney Plus. Uh, stars William Defoe, and um, a great movie. Um, and I'll, I'll just leave it at this because it is on Disney Plus. I hope that your listeners will take a watch because it's a wonderful film. But I'll just leave uh, this quote that William Defoe's character shares. He said, "I always thought that he lived for the sled, meaning the dog. I always thought that he lived for the sled. What he lived for was me." And again, it speaks to that unconditional love that a dog mm-hmm. will bring to a relationship. And uh, it's a wonderful film. You know, it is a good film, isn't it? And really well made, great acting. And uh, one of, another another great adventure too, right? This, right. You know, the, the, uh, great choice. Yeah. Um, ne- next one of the same ilk, um, Iron Will. Um, the 19 oh, yeah. Film. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, um, call it stars Kevin Spacey. Um, great, great film, and I'll just leave it at this. Um, he received um, a the star receives this particular um, bit of advice from one of the watchers of this race. Um, Don't let fear stand in the way of your dreams, son. And that encapsulates the film for me. But it, it it's worth a watch. Iron Will, nineteen ninety four. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and two, two other films just really quickly that deserve an honorable mention Oliver and company because Billy Joel is the Billy Joel. Yes. And <laughs> uh, 1988 film. And then lady and the tramp, of course, from 1955. Oh my gosh. Um, it was released a month before Walt, uh, before Disneyland opened. And uh, what a great film. Great. Uh, I love both of those films chris great great choices isn't i mean i remember when i saw Oliver coming in the theater i just couldn't believe that billy joel was voicing <laughs> you know one of my favorite singers was you know a voice of uh in a disney animated movie and that song is one of my feel you know, that why should i worry song is one of my favorite uh still exactly. you know, Dis- disney disney songs and what's better than lady in the tramp i mean i you know i just i just watched it also just you know a few days ago it's such an excellent film. Yeah. Great film about dogs. And just, I think just a great story too. Yeah. Anyway, great choices. Well, and, and Stan, I really appreciate, uh, and we can talk about this a little bit later, but I really appreciate this assignment to think about my favorite Disney films because, you know, it, it's revealed some things about me and um, I really like the exercise and I encourage your listeners to do that as well. Yeah. Thank you. So, this, so, is, it's so fun. Yeah. The the last phylum, as it were, um, overcoming challenges. Right? Yes. To learn. Um, number one, Rogue One. Um, nice. Uh, 2016 film, of course, by Lucasfilm, which counts. Um, Rogue One's here because A New Hope couldn't be. and uh, But a great um, preamble, of course, to A New Hope. Um, the the mantra in that film, I am one with the force, the force is with me. Um, really great film about sacrifice and bringing more context to the Star Wars universe. Isn't it a great film? I'm so glad you added it on, on, onto the list. Uh, just the, the whole thing, such a great uh, adventure. So much, um, I think, uh, Heart wrenching, you know, in, in, in that you know, many lives. <laughs> What's the, the, the quote that you know, is really kind of the genesis of the film? You know, many lives were lost in, in, in getting in getting these plans. Exactly, and, 
and uh but still such so so exciting just a great great star wars film and just a great film love this choice agreed and it's and it's fun to see darth vader in his element and princess I mean, Leia one more time and that final scene when darth vader shows up on the ship <laughs> he, he was like holy cow it's <laughs> just breathtaking i loved it it is indeed so number two on the overcoming challenges, a lesson to learn. Um, again, these are not in any particular order, but McFarland, USA. Um, Another great sports movie. You know, great about. sports movie. Yeah, I love this film. Yeah, um, it's a terrific film. Yeah, uh, it's, a, uh, it's uh, a 2015 film. It's about leadership, change, hope and struggle. And what a coach can really do to an individual and um, really yeah. a beautiful film. Um, really liked it a lot. Um, I have a quote from this film too. And it's, oh, good. About, it's about one of the students. Um, he was asked to write a paper in school and was doing um, a really nice job in school. And the, and the teacher came to the coach and uh, said to Kevin Costner's character, Hey, look, you're making an impact. And the, and the student wrote this. We fly like blackbirds through the orange groves, floating on a warm wind. When we run, we own the earth. The land is ours. We speak the bird's language, not immigrant no more, not stupid when we run. Our spirits fly. We speak to the gods. When we run, we are the gods. And I think what the reason I like this film is you yourself can have a dramatic impact on people's lives. If you give them an opportunity, you encourage them and support them and help them. Um, really a great film that drives that lesson home. Yeah. Great choice, Chris. It's such an inspirational film. Yep. Yeah, I I love it. Um, the next one um, on the list, Mr. Holland's Opus. Oh, yes. Uh, 1995 film. Um, love this film. Um, Richard Dreyfus film mm -hmm. um and he does a great job playing a um a, mu a musician that wants to create a symphony um but to make ends meet he goes to work for a school and becomes a band teacher and over the years um you see him struggling to try to get his symphony accomplished and um there's one scene that is particularly striking for me stan um and i'm sure that you can guess what it is but a young woman comes in. She's frustrated. She can't play the music. She's having a hard time um, finding her own self-confidence. And like a good teacher does, took her over to the mirror, got down on her level, looked in the mirror with her and said, said this. He said, let me ask you a question. When you look in the mirror, what do you like best about yourself? The student, her name is Gertrude. She says, I like my hair. Mr. Holland then says, why? And, Gert and Gertrude says, well, my father always says that reminds him of the sunset. Then Mr. Holland says and coaches, then play the sunset. And she does. And um, she makes some, some great music. But um, at the end of the movie, several years later, um, this, this same little girl that he caught down on the level and helped to coach her is the governor of the state. And comes back and we find out that Mr. Holland's opus really is the students that he The has. students. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the uh, and then the tears just start flying. <laughs> As the bell theater is bawling. <laughs> oh, what a good what a good movie and great, great quote, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that film. And then and then Stan, the last one on the list, and the last one that I have to share with you is um signs the movie signs yes touch tone movie um, yeah. released in 2022 one of my favorite movies of all time um and and it's not maybe for the reason that many people think um uh it's classified as a horror film actually yeah um <laughs> where um these signs there's signs in the crops and these aliens come down and the family is threatened um you uh, you get a good look at the fact that their lives are in peril and they could die. They have a last meal together and they're terrified 
about what's going to happen throughout the night. But then there's a scene in the film um, at the end where everything comes together. Um, Mel Gibson's character, uh, Graham Hess, lost his wife. And and as a result of that, he's lost his religion um, because he was um, a preacher before that. Merrill Hess, played by Joaquin Phoenix, um, tried out for baseball and he swung his bat too hard. Um, because uh, Graham, Mel Gibson's character, was was left because of the death of his his wife, left with two um, two children at home. Morgan Hess has asthma really bad, and then Bo Hess um, has this drinking problem, and she leaves uh, water all over the house, and it it feels like a mess, and it feels um, feels very challenging as a family just to survive because they've lost this loved one. The reason why I love the film, um, it has such an amazing lesson for me. All of us have challenges um, in our lives and we, we all struggle with something. It doesn't matter who you are. And those very struggles are the thing that saved them in the end. Um, you know, uh, Mel Gibson's character remembers the last conversation with his wife. Merrill Hess saves the family with a baseball bat because he swung too hard. Yeah. Um, Morgan's character is saved because he has asthma and the poison from the alien doesn't go into his lungs. And then um, the family is saved because Bo has left water that is poison to the alien throughout the house. Yeah. And it's just, for me, a, um, in horror fashion, this wonderful message that we all have struggles. And in the end, we might find out that they are the very things that save us too. Yes. Chris, what a great selection. And, and that film, it's a really great film, isn't it? And just for all the reasons that you're, that you're saying. And, and I, I was so amazed by the way it was, again put together because just as you said it's these things that are that, that are struggles or even things that we view as challenges or things that we don't want in our lives but they're the, they're the things that, that we actually need exactly you know that save us oh good great great selection chris well thank you stan and what what a wonderful exercise i would encourage your listeners to go through the same and and list the movies that they love that might have an impact on them and It's taught me about me, Stan, and I really appreciate the assignment to be able to talk with you about films that I love, films that have an impact on me, and um, films really do have a great way of teaching, encouraging, inspiring, and just really appreciate this opportunity, Stan. Oh, Chris, I'm just so glad. It's always great to spend time with you, and what a fun way to do it, talking about uh, these movies that, that that are meaningful to you and thanks for thank you so much for putting together this outstanding list and and uh this has been so so much fun chris thank you thank you well that does it for this episode of the movies past and present podcast Again, many thanks to Chris Dallin for joining me today. More information about the movies discussed in today's podcast can be found in the podcast notes on my blog at moviespastandpresent.com. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. Links are also on the blog. And follow me on Instagram. My handle is at moviespap, as in past and present. As always, I hope you will enjoy some good movies this week, whether they be from the past or the present. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, be safe out there and dedicate yourself to the truth.